One hears many things about so-called lost episodes. Many of them are supposed episodes of child-friendly animation series like The Amazing World of Gumball or SpongeBob SquarePants. Filled to the brim with gore, blood, and other child-unfriendly imagery, most of the time pretty over-the-top stuff and not that scary or originalness in the end of the world. Squidward Suicide and SpongeBob Suicide come to mind, but since because it was one of the first, it can get away with the cliches and can stand on pure shock volume alone, and because it introduced those ideas in the first place. I, like many others, heard the tales but never saw such an episode. It piqued my interest, and one day after seeing another episode of my favorite show, The Loud House, I thought about searching about a lost episode of that series. It was a long stretch to think that I could find one for a relatively new series, but a try wouldn't cost me anything. So I booted up my computer and started to search on the free web. There I just found some usual lost episode creepypasta and badly edited scary Loud House videos. I had reached a dead end after a while after even more obscure sites and sources didn't give me any useful results. There was another option. One that I had never tried before called the Deep Web. A place where people said where even entering it was a tremendous risk. You could hire assassins there, watch snuff live streams and so-called red rooms, buy illegal goods, drugs, slaves, etc., and find secrets about society, different governments, and the truth about aliens and how they control humanity. All of that was not true, of course, but it was a very interesting read. Still, I hope that I had found that I had found here in the deep web a lost episode of The Loud House. At least maybe a short animation of something scary would also suffice. I didn't expect anything official, something more elaborate by a fan at best. Deeper and deeper I searched with my virtual machine I'd used to avoid catching malware and viruses. Better safe than sorry. Eventually I found a little really obscure, strange, but somewhat normal looking site. It had an older feel to it, from a time where the internet was still in its infancy. A little bit more unstructured. A slightly pixelated group picture of the Loud family was at the top of the page with the official logo underneath it, and underneath that, in turn, in small writing in white, was written, Loud House Fan Site. The background of the site was a forest green in color, with cutouts of the Loud family members here and there. On the right side, there were links in the form of words with many old websites using them, from top to bottom. The options I could choose were from the following were Home, Character Bios, Episode Guide, Fan Art, Fanfic, Fan Comics, Staff, and Credits. Site Notice. Not really much different from your usual fan sites, even if it was made in the style of older websites. I wasn't really impressed by the design at first, but I got used to the retro charm the layout had and design in my opinion. I looked at the fan arts, some bad, some good, and some very bizarre. No loud sussed pictures around, and despite my very rookie looking design, the pictures always also had their sources in order. The fanfics were mainly links to their respective pages on the free web. The pages had some comments under the links, most likely from the creator and administrator of the site. He put links there to stories he liked, but also some that he didn't think were good also had a place for some reason. Character bios weren't surprising either. General and detailed information about the Loud family and some supporting characters. It also had bits of trivia I had already liked that Lenny was supposed to be an 8 year old girl, obese and having super strength she didn't know how to control, and that Lincoln could have been one of the younger siblings or the older ones instead of being one in the middle. Stuff one could easily find out in the Loud House wiki or at any other places, but it was still nice to read them anyway. But the character bio page made me raise an eyebrow when I read Luna's entry. Luna Loud was a brown-haired, purple-dressed rocker who played guitar and spoke with a British accent. After Lenny, she was the nicest of the Loud girls. In the description section of her bio, it was written that she was bisexual and in love with a girl named Sam. I dismissed that instantly, thinking that it was just, it was just either a mistake or a rumor the administrator of the site had taken too seriously. Probably some fandom theory written in a very convincing manner, but ultimately false. I looked a little around the site before going and doing other things. A week later, two new episodes of The Loud House were going to air soon. The names of the episodes were Pet Peeved and Ellis for Love. The second episode shocked me because of the revelation at the end. 
Not because of the fact that it was revealed that Luna Loud was bisexual, but because it was a grand premiere of that episode, and there was no way in hell I should have known that beforehand. But I did. Thanks to this Loud House site on the deep web. I returned to the deep website on my computer and looked up the information about Luna again. Still there. No, It didn't suddenly vanish, but it was still visible. No changes. Nothing. Still as I left it. I was really curious now. Who had made the site and how did he get such information about an important reveal? Or was that person just very lucky with a fan theory? I had visited the site every time before the premiere of a new episode from that point on. That hadn't been on my plan, but I'd looked through the bio entries of the Deep website before the airing of another episode called Garage Band, and it was uh, and it was of Lana, the tomboyish blonde six-year-old twin of Lola, who was bunking with her older sister Lori in her bed whenever she had nightmares. At first, it sounded unusually caring for Lori to let that happen, but on the other hand, it actually made sense. She wasn't uncaring, after all. As I watched the episode a week later proper, Lana was... Lana really was regularly sleeping in Lori's bed whenever she had nightmares. It was very cute, and I was starting to wonder who had created this page. Leaking such spoilers was nothing new for any media, but spoiling that Luna was bisexual was a pretty large one. One people probably behind the production would actually try and keep a secret because of its importance and, importance and sensitive nature. In a sense, it was very lucky for the show and the fans that the spoiler had only appeared here, and not on a site used by the larger internet surfing public. It would have ruined the surprise of the episode big time. Otherwise, and some people on the production staff could have gotten into major trouble. But one of the premiere of the other more episodes, I found more leaked information. For the episode, Are You, Are you For Real? The bio page informed me that Lincoln Lot would capture a real ghost, and he did. This trend would continue on until I spotted a particular entry on Lynn's trivia section in her bio. There it read, The most horrific event in Lynn Loud's long, young life took place in the episode Alone. Most horrific event? Plausible and implausible scenarios played before my eyes, asking myself, what could it be? Lynn losing a championship game? Would Lynn accidentally in be injured during one of injure one of her siblings? Would she break one of her own bones and be forced not to partake in any sports for a while? Lynn's favorite sports getting banned? Losing her legs? Lucy getting killed before her eyes? It sounded like a description of a lost episode could have, so my hopes for finally finding one could be fulfilled soon. Of course, anticipation had grabbed me. I could be wrong, and the thing could have just turned out to be a normal episode. After all, the site spoiled information from episodes that still had to air, some small reveals and some big reveals. But there was no mention anywhere about the episode called Alone. Not from any official sources or very well informed fan sites. Was this episode such a big secret, or was this truly one of the infamous lost episodes these creepypastas were talking about? I thought about my next move, and decided to look through the episode's guide. Maybe it had more information about the situation. Expectantly, I found a list of episodes with brief summaries of the, of the plots and other information. Title cards of the episodes, length of the episodes, names of the directors and authors, the date of production, the date of actual airing, and more information about the episodes. I looked up the info of the unaired episode, and I indeed found Alone listed in it. There was no director listed, neither was there a storyboard artist or writer, and I guess they hadn't been, hadn't been revealed yet for some reason. The premiering airing date was for the tw 25th 08, 2017. It was the 25th and I was ready. The official sources didn't say anything about this episode airing today, but there was a slight glimmer of hope that it could be a surprise. That slight glimmer immediately went out as the episode that premiered was not the one I was waiting for. Instead, it was a rerun of A Tattler's Tale. I sighed in disappointment. I think I'd gotten my hopes a bit too high. I watched the episode, which aired instead, and after it ended, I had another idea. Maybe the episode would premiere on the Deep Web website. There was also the realization that it could have been a live stream, a live stream posted only today, one that was already over. Still, I got over my PC and submerged myself into the Deep Web once again. On first glance, there was nothing, not even a mention of a live stream. I searched everywhere. The fan art, the fan videos, every nook and cranny of this Loud House Deep Web page. 
but I found nothing. Crestfallen, I was about to leave when I had another hunch. Maybe there was a hidden link somewhere. To decrease the amount of searching the entire site again, I thought about the problem. I reasoned that the link would have been in the episode's guide, specifically the place where the description of Balone was. I looked for the link, hovered my mouse over every word and every letter in hopes of finding it, and I found one. In the description, in the words, horrific. Very fitting. I clicked on it, and it led me to a hidden video. I didn't know what kind of video program this was. It wasn't YouTube, and I wasn't able to recognize the layout, probably from some really small unknown site that people use to upload videos when YouTube blocks them. There weren't any links that could lead me to the host, but I wasn't interested in that anyway. I clicked on the video, and the episode started. I'll try and talk about the episode in a more flourish way and interpret some scenes because just describing it would not do the episode justice. I'm not a professional novelist, so don't expect much either. The episode alone starts. Lin Lao Jr., athlete of the family with thick brown hair and a ponytail, woke up in the room she was sharing with her younger sister Lucy. The rest of the lightly freckled young woman the rest of the lightly freckled young woman during the night had been a good one, even though she had a strange feeling upon waking up. She stretched her well-trained body and yawned, ready for her new day. She looked over to the bed of Lucy, but didn't see her. Her bed was made and everything looked clean. Lynn didn't care, she probably was already up and had made her bed herself this morning for some reason. Lynn just shrugged, got out of bed, and put on her usual clothes on. A red and white jersey with a red number one on it, red and white track shorts with cleats with striped knee-high socks. Walking out of the room, she noticed how unusually quiet it was in the house. There was no screams, no noises, no trampling, no fighting sounds, no explosions, no smoke, not even Lori talking about Bobby on her phone. Confused, the young sportswoman called out for her siblings. Lucy? shouted Lynn, calling out for her roommate. Did you hide the family to scare me? She didn't get an answer. Lori? She called out. Are you here? No answer. Lenny? She continued more nervously. Luna? Luann? Are you here? She walked from one room to another, looking for her sisters. Lincoln? Lana? Lola? No answer. Lisa? Are you there, Lisa? I is Lily with you? There was nobody on the second floor. Lynn ran down the old stairs in her home, hoping her parents could bring light to the whereabouts of her siblings. She shouted, Mom, Dad, do you know where the others are? Once again, the young girl received no answer. Only silence. Mom? Dad? She looked for her family in every room in the house. She didn't find them in the living room or in the kitchen. No trace of them, of them in the parents' bedroom or in the cellar. Lynn was confused and a little scared. Did the others play a joke on her? I can't imagine how Luann would do this, but why would the others agree to cooperate with such a joke? In her thought bubble, she imagined how Luann stole away the entire family except Lynn in the middle of the night, probably to put them in some horror movie location. But today was not April 1st. And even if that was the case, she doubted that Luann could kidnap all of them without anyone noticing. She ran up, searching for any hints and clues about what could have happened to her family. One thing she hadn't noticed the first time was how clean everything was. No evidence of a fight, all the rooms looked cleaned, like all the kids had done their housework and nobody else had been in there. Everything was at its pace, minus all the animals, which disturbed Lynn even more. Who and why would somebody steal all their animals? In more visuals, Lynn thought that maybe Luann brought them to an animal care facility. Her smartphone. She took it out and immediately phoned Lori. She didn't know why, her, but maybe because she was the one most often seen with a smartphone. But that didn't matter right now. Her picture showed up, and Lynn clicked on the number. No signal. She tried to phone Lucy as she clicked her number, with her picture next to it, but she didn't get an answer either. She tried calling Lenny, Lu Luna, Luann, Lincoln, Lana, Lola, Lisa, Dad, Mom, and even Lily. No signal from any of them. Lynn regulated her breathing as good as she could while fear was gripping her heart. Someone or something had stolen away her family. Her large family. Her beloved family. Her only iron will and stubborn pride kept her from crying. 
Even if nobody was around, she wouldn't show any weakness. She had to be strong now more than ever if she wanted to see her family again. Opening the door to her home, she stepped outside and started her search. Her first course of action was to ask their cranky neighbor Mr. Grouse for help. Maybe he had seen something of interest. Hopefully that old man could give her any useful information. She made her way over to his house, reaching it. She, could, she didn't even bother with the doorbell and knocked on the door. Mr. Gauss, are you there? No answer. In a more desperate tone, to make the old man notice her, she tried the do doorbell, but still no answer. She was very anxious, so it was no wonder how daring she was when she climbed the fence of her neighbor's garden and run to his back door. She knocked and screamed his name this time. Mr. Gauss, please answer me! She knew her neighbor hated anything or anyone trespassing in his garden, so she ran a few rounds around said garden, screaming about how she was wrecking the grass. But no angry neighbor came running out of the house screaming, My yard, my property! Lynn even started to damage the grass, ripping it out of the ground and throwing it around, screaming like an angry dog in the hopes it would summon the conundrum of a neighbor. But he didn't come out. Lynn was considering smashing one of the windows, but decided against it. She didn't feel desperate enough to get in trouble for a broken window. Yet she was yearning for a scolding from her mom and dad. Thus she would know that they would have returned to her. Leaving the property in the yard of Mr. Grouse behind, she made her way to the house of the McBrides. They were on the emergency contacts and very good friends of the family. She ran towards their house, not knowing why it just felt right. While running through the street, she noticed how empty and lifeless everything was. She didn't hear or see anyone. The streets were as empty as the salt desert of Utah. It was a haunting view and it didn't feel right for the young sports ace. Everything looked clean. The houses looked like people still lived in them. The cars outside the pavement didn't look unused. The meadows were green and healthy looking. There was no traces of that any kind of fight or flight or anything vanishing in the area. She didn't spot any kind of crashed or abandoned cards belonging to the street, damaged houses, or even garages littered anywhere. Slowing down her pace, she knew that wasting her energy wouldn't get her anywhere now. She adapted to her slower speed to take a better look at the situation. She walked to the high school she attended with her four older sisters. She didn't know why, but for some reason her feet had brought her to this place. She had forgotten if today was a school day or not, and she didn't have the time to think about it. The doors to this place were leaning wide open with no better idea. She invited herself into the place she had to visit regularly. The halls were empty, like they were supposed to be, but Lynn hoped that somebody was there. If nobody else was there, she would just look through Royal Woods Elementary. While she was running through the desert, deserted but not abandoned looking halls of her current school, Lynn wondered how fast she could check up all the rooms. She made a few stretching exercises to prepare her body for the self-imposed challenge. It filled the young, brown-haired lady with determination, though, through the usage of routine. Routine, a powerful tool to get through the most unusual situations. As she finished her training, she got into one of, on one knee, her hand on the ground. One, two, three, go! Lynn ran through their school, opening every door and ran through every room. The classrooms, the gym, the teacher's lounge, the laboratories, the principal's office, etc. Nobody was there. Not even a single soul in the cellar, seeking solace from the empty town. This led Lynn to abandoning this place quickly because a school without people can be an incredibly frightening place. Her next target was a school that she had once visited, and now her younger siblings were doing that at the moment. On her way there, she still spotted neither animal nor human, but the place she ran through and saw continued to just look empty. Not abandoned, and not abandoned or given up, it just looked so serene, which made the absence of any life even more disturbing. Lynn wasn't used to such a sight, and it made her spine tingle with terror. As she reached the elementary school of her younger kin, her hopes welled up just to be brought down quickly. This place was also empty. Clean looking, but empty. There was nobody in the kindergarten class, there was nobody in the different classrooms, there was nobody in the gym, and there was nobody in the teacher's lounge, cellar, and the principal's office. Even the large 
Terranium filled with frogs was void of said amphibian creatures. The young sports ace then ran into the supermarket, so she wasn't forced to hold still and think about ramifications of her situation. Nobody was there. No customers, no staff, and no hummers. At least all the food and drinks were there, so she didn't have to worry about starving or dying of thirst in the near future. She played with the thought of swiping everything something to drink, but decided against it, just in case. She had no money to pay, and she wasn't willing to risk come becoming a thief, especially if she wasn't thirsty enough to excuse such an act. Lynn ran, and then she ran to the supermarket into the mall. Empty. From the mall, she ran to her dad's old workplace. Empty as well. The dentist, the dentist where her mother was working for. Empty. Dairyland? Empty. Jean Jan's French Mex? Empty. Empty, empty, and even more empty. Nobody was in this town anymore. That was it. She tried to, she had to call the police. Somebody took the call. Hello, is this the police? I need help. Nobody answered. Hello, Miss or Mr. Police Officer? She didn't receive an answer. She listened very closely, but she wasn't even hearing anybody breathing on the other end. Then the call ended. Lynn started to feel strange. She felt something she hadn't felt before. True terror. Her family wasn't there, nobody else was there, no animals were there, and the police answered but the phone but didn't say anything to her. Not even a creepy breathing, which freaked her out even more for reasons she really didn't understand. Something would have been better than nothing at this point. She had no idea what was going on. She played with the idea of finding the police station, but decided against it, fearing for what she didn't know. Something had answered her call, but she couldn't, she could only think of horrible things on the other end. She imagined everything from cannibalistic aliens to mass murdering ghosts, from slasher monsters to insane lunatic scientists. She wished that Lucy was here. She probably could figure out what kind of spook was going around here. The fifth oldest thought about phoning the fire department or the 911, but she feared what could happen if somebody answered the phone. Her face was a picture of worry. Her cheeks hung down and her eyes were weary. The forehead showed many lines of worry and her lips trembled a little bit. The young girl rubbed her own arms, suddenly feeling cold and wishing somebody else could embrace her, favoring her family. Guys, I need you. You were always around me. Why not now? Where did you go? What, what's going on? I don't want to be alone. Why am I alone? What have I done to deserve this? Lynn started to become really self-reflective and started to think about the entire situation when she wandered through the empty streets, visible more through ba balloons. Was this even her home? Was this the royal wood she knew? Was this an empty alternative royal woods? Was this hell? Lynn wondered how and why she would have died and what deed brought her to stay in hell. Was her behavior where she won games? Was the way she treated Lincoln sometimes? Yes, she used him to test her new fighting techniques sometimes, but she was careful not to break his bones anymore or to produce any bruises on his body. One month long grounding was enough in her book. She tried to calm herself with the breathing practice she had learned during her judo training. If she wanted to get behind the mystery of this, she had to keep her nerves under control. If she wanted to find her family, she had to make a plan. She decided to go home for something to eat, drink, and to recover. She had to get rid of her ever-growing anxiety. She worried about the latter. In this situation, she asked herself how long she could take this. After another quick controlled run, she was home again. Her mind was tired, and her body still tensed, and she wanted to cry. But her stubbornness and sense of toxic mascu toxic femi toxic pride held her back. She wasn't the one to cry. She couldn't cry. Only a strong person who would survive in the situation. Feelings would only get in her way. With a raised chest, she entered her home, closing the door behind her, and got herself something to eat and drink from the kitchen. After finishing her simple meal consisting of cola and pop tarts, she returned to her room, ready to get a good sleep. Her mental exhaustion hadn't been really quelled after her meal, and her fears didn't diminish like a snowball in the sun, but rather increased like a snowball running down a snowy hill. She wondered if she would even be able to sleep under these circumstances. She sighed as she opened the door. Bear all hope. She spotted something or someone lying in her bed. 
as she recognized the person she never thought of seeing here or anywhere else for that matter. She looked at somebody in her bed, sleeping. It was herself. The sound of the opening door woke the other Lynn up, which made her go up from her lying position to a sitting one, and she stretched her limbs. The other Lynn, Lynn then looked at the original. The other looked at her, not moving a muscle, not making a sound. She just sat there, staring at the original. Lynn was at a loss for words, but more importantly, she was losing her mind. She wasn't able to even form even the simplest reaction. Her thoughts meshed together into a blob of chaotic feeling, a realm of confusion that had become an insolvable mess of questions, confusion, and fear. She tried to find a reasonable explanation for the impossibility before her eyes, but a person whose intelligence was at the edge of madness wasn't able to conjure the logic to solve such a question. Her doppelganger continued to stare at Lynn, nothing else. Her eyes weren't empty or white, she didn't grin. She didn't make any aggressive postures. She didn't have any weapons on her or any scary looking abnormalities on her body. This entity didn't look any different from herself. There was no difference, but also no sound from this being. It was just there and staring. After a while, Lynn opened her mouth to ask her doppelganger a question, but instead she started to scream, first slowly and controlled and then louder and louder, making her family name proud. Her scream was so loud, so intense, and so filled with fear, it howled throughout the entire house. Her doppelganger continued to just stare like she was watching something she watched every day. She was not perturbed by the screams, which in turn made the original Lynn even more perturbed, and she screamed even louder. The fact that her voice hadn't broken so far was a little wonder. Her scream, fueled by her breaking mind and the doppelganger who was just staring, turned into a catastrophic shriek of total terror caused by the unknown before the young sportsman, before the sportswoman. Lori stormed into Lynn's room with her golf club, followed by Lenny holding her hair dry like a pistol. What's going on here? The oldest demanded to know. Where, uh? Luna with her axe came in, pushing Lori out of the way and on the ground where Luann did the same with Lenny, armed with an oversized mallet. Is everything all right? Asked Luna. Who's screaming? Do I have to introduce my intruder to my mallet? Shouted Luann with a giggle. Get it? Before anyone could groan, the rocker and the comedian just got run over by a little pink car, driven by Lola, with Lana in the other seat as a co-driver, holding a wrench in her right and a hammer in her left hand. Who dares interrupt my beauty sleep? Lola angrily demanded to know. I hope you wrote your will and testament. Lisa was the last one to arrive in the room climbing into the car with Lily in her arms who was, to the surprise of everyone, very quiet. You are all kissed by Fortona, you know that? Our youngest didn't start to clamor as you aroused her from the journey in the land of Morphus that gave her the sleep of Rem during the rhubarb here. Her other siblings looked confused at the child genius. She sighed and said, you're all lucky you didn't wake Lily with your noise. Lynn had stopped screaming and her gothic sister was by her side, stroking her leg. None had seen her move from her bed. She had just appeared beside her. Lynn, why did you scream during the middle of the darkest night? Was a vampire visiting you? Woken by the Tulma, the only son of the family came into the room. I have an important meeting in the morning with Clyde, Lincoln sighed. After hearing the scream, he was quickly out of bed, but after hearing his sisters being on their way and the lack of ensuing fighting noises, he took this time so he wouldn't run into a pile of bodies of overprotective sisters. What happened? Did Lucy manage to do the ultimate accidental scare and killed somebody? Maybe you're onto something, remarked the oldest. But before we can figure this out for now, I have to ask for a favor. Get down from me now! The seven sisters who had positioned herself on Lori and Lenny scattered and helped them up. Like, that was heavy, Lenny exclaimed. What could Lynn, Lynn make Toad scream so hard? Lynn was staring at her sisters. They were here, blinking. She wasn't alone. Lynn, what happened? Asked Lana worried some. That scream was unusual, even for us. I went to hard rock metal concerts with less volume than that, told Luna the fa to the family. What happened, dude? Lynn wanted to say something casual, something chill, something cool, saying that she was in control again, but she opened her mouth and she started to cry. There was no strength left in herself not to cry. 
Her entire body began to shake like a freezing dog in a cold winter day. Lynn had feared that the others would make fun of her crying in the past, but instead she felt several hugs around her body. Warm, soft, cuddly, loving, there was no scorn or mockery, only affection and concern. Lynn felt safe and free to cry her eyes out. With the dam broken, she cried harder than ever before, happy about the comfort of her family. Like, I totes don't get it. The Loud family has gathered in the room where Lori and Lenny had their domicile to sort the situation out and calm everybody. For some incredible strike of luck, nothing had woken up their parents despite Lynn's incredible scream. Lynn was lying with her head on Lenny's lap, who was affectionately stroking her head while Luna was stroking circles over Lenny's back with her finger. That nightmare didn't sound scary at all, was Lenny's opinion. Dude, that was scary, all right, was Luna's objection. Totally alone, nobody there, and you find a doppelganger of yourself? That sounds pretty frightening to me. I would really be scared to be that lonely. The sports star had told her siblings about the nightmares she had, and it had been difficult to her because it didn't sound that scary to her. Some alone time sounds heavily, chirped L Lola, and o only in your thoughts, total peace and no worries about someone running into the way of your car? It was literally your own fault, protested Lori, who was sitting on her bed, looking up from her smartphone. Drivers have to watch out for the pedestrians. Pedestrians should know their place. I think it was scary. Lana, who was sitting next to Lori, commented. I would feel really lonely with nobody around. Not even our pets? Absolutely depressing, Lana sighed. And the only person you find is a clone of yourself? Wait, the last part is my daily nightmare. Hey! protested Lola, feeling insulted. Lana laughed as her twin hunted her through the room. Lucy, who was sitting on the ground between both beds reading a book titled, entitled Armancy for Beginners, looked up and told their sisters in her usual moody tone, I didn't any find anything about the dream, Lin, the dream Lynn had. There are similar themes, but not combined like that or dreams that take place in such a normal looking environment. Lucy sighed before she addressed, your dream sounds more atmospheric and surreal at the end. I don't know that I don't know that it means, but it seems to be scarier that way. What followed was a discussion of the siblings about the strange and unusual dream of Lynn. It became a black back and forth of opinions, interpretations, and arguments of its true meaning, reaching from complicated omens to random chance and very bizarre theories. Lynn wasn't satisfied with any answer they came up with, but she was happy that the others tried so hard to help her. So, you weren't even aware that you were dreaming? Brought Lisa the discussion back to the topic. Then it, was an, then it was a normal and not a lucid dream, but more coherent than a usual dream. To put it for you in simpler words, normal dreams are random, incoherent, chaotic, and messy while we sleep. Not coherent, clear events like in most media. You are a Thark Ordin's sister, encountered something not many people encounter. Dreaming of your doppelganger could mean that you fear yourself, speculated Lucy. Maybe you have to fear yourself? You mean like in that movie where that guy talks to his reflection? That was a crazy guy, Lola, explained Lori. Wait, you saw a taxi driver? Before Lori could ask more questions about Lola's unusual viewing habits, Lynn chimed in again with the question. Can I stay this night with you guys? The question was followed by utter silence. Did that dream scare you so much? Asked Lenny, worried, but also in an understanding tone. Yeah, I'm ashamed to admit it, but the dream scared me so much. Lynn sniffled and looked down in shame. I don't want to be alone. I want to bunk with one of you. Lynn, you're strong, feisty, and brave, told Lori, her younger sister. You don't really need some company tonight, right? Lynn blushed heavily, looking down in disgrace and shame. I'm still scared. You all think of me as a wiener right now, right? And how? Lola, scolded Lincoln. Be nice, that wasn't your usual cookie cutter bad dream. That was a surreal nightmare. And? The unknown can scare us more than anything, we understand, chimed Lucy in and Lincoln nodded in agreement. Lenny can understand spiders, so any encounter with them can only lead to temporary fear, but what Linton dreamed is unexplainable at the moment. It may look silly to you, Lola, but her fear is understandable for me. Most of the others agreed, and even the ones who didn't thought it was scary said nothing. Still, 
Prepare to be teased later down the line, promised Lola. You better don't you better don't become a scaredy cat because of the of one stupid dream. I have enough nightmares all the time, reminded Lana, her twin, with a serious expression. You don't make fun of that either. I do too. You did? One day another our usual arguments. Lola tried to remember and succeeded. Wasn't that important? Whatever. Probably a thing that is forgotten soon. Don't think too much about it, Lynn. Lynn didn't know if Lola was condescending, sympathetic, or both, but once again, she looked over to Lori with begging eyes. If you're so scared, go to Lucy, the oldest recommended, or Lincoln. Never again, Lincoln said in a stone-cold tone before adding in a softer one, only as a last resort. Why don't you come, come to me? Luna offered her little sister while softly poking her back with her fingers an unusual massage. We'll rock my bed together. Paraphrasing, Lisa said without looking up. Some blushed, some laughed, and the younger ones were confused. Or you could come to me, offered Luann. You'll have the best time in my bed, Luann laughed. Her siblings groaned, and Lisa once again said, paraphrasing. Hey, like we could toast to a sleepover together, Lenny suggested. All together? No, was Lori's reaction. Awesome idea, sis, Luna agreed with Lenny. No proposed Lori. I guess I could leave the dark solitude of my bed for one night, exclaimed Lucy. No, said once again. Lori, who felt ignored. Of course, answered Lenny. No, shouted Lori. I will accompany you in, the con in this commandments, added Lisa, stoic as ever. No! Her final shot of denying finally got her attention, silencing her sisters. Lori was fuming with rage. It's bad enough with Lana's regular nightmares. This isn't the Ritz nightmares or not. I will not stand for this behavior for my 13-year-old sister. Silence followed, and everybody felt uncomfortable. But after a few seconds, Lori sighed. She wasn't really upset about the situation. She just wanted to make Lynn feel comfortable. Despite Lori's, Lori's generosity, Lynn had to promise that this wouldn't turn into a regular occurrence. It also helped that it was Friday, and it was the weekend in sight. They could live with a different sleeping arrangement for one night. Also, nobody's beauty sleep had to suffer, at least for the siblings who thought more about their appearance. Lori gave her orders. Luna, Luann, Lana, Lisa, you come with me. Lynn, Lucy, Lola, Lincoln, you stay with Lenny. Yes, ma'am, they all said. They quickly got into more or less comfortable positions on the two beds. The little Lana positioned herself between Lori and Lenny's bellies to be safe and sound, while Lisa cuddled herself with Lori's back while Luann was behind her. Then, Luann embraced Lisa with one hand and Lori with the other, while Lori embraced the two sisters before her with one arm each. Lenny solved the situation by placing Lynn before her with an embrace while Lucy embraced her roommate from behind. Lola was placed on Lenny's back with Lincoln embracing the little pageant queen from behind with one arm and Lenny with the other. If you move too much, you can sleep on the ground threatened Lori, cradling her sisters at the same time. And no talking. Everyone just wish each other good night and then close your eyes. Good night, everybody. I love you all, and I'll protect you all with all my might. Several good night and sleep well were heard, including a good night, Jim Bob, for unknown reasons. Lenny and Lucy did their best to comfort their sporty sister, cuddling her and telling her that she'd be safe. No one will harm you, baby sister, promised Lenny and kissed her on her head. We're all here for you. I'm never-ending darkness, darkness that will surround and protect you, promised Lucy in a somber, friendly tone. Lynn was calmed by those words, even the ones that Lucy worked. She closed her eyes, snug as a bug, cuddled together with their sisters who laid around her like a protective wall. No reason to worry. She was home, she was safe, and she wasn't alone. The doppelganger of Lynn observed them out of Lori's closet before the scene cut to black. The episode alone ends. I was speechless as this episode ended. I couldn't believe how harmless it was at the end. This was the lost episode of The Loud House? No gore, no graphic imagery, no violent deaths for the characters, no hyperrealism, no Luann or Lola going psycho and killing everybody, no sudden inclusion of an inappropriate material? The episode had been tame. It was scary in a way, the doppelganger of Lynn raised questions, but this was not the fare I was used to when it come to lost episodes. I wasn't disappointed by what I had found. In fact, I was astonished finding a lost episode that was breaking the mold of the usual fare. 
but I was surprised by what I had found. I was also kind of glad to see, not see how the 11 children, including a baby, got mutilated in the most gruesome way possible. I doubt it would have been psychologically scarring for the rest of my life, but I liked the louds and seeing them die in horrible deaths was not something I was particularly eager to witness. Of course, I tried to save the video so that I could show it to the whole world, but for unknown video host ignored any and all conversion programs. I tried it for so long, used so many different programs, but gave up after a while. Unfortunately, I was so tired after watching the episode and trying to save it that I didn't think of using my smartphone camera to record the episode. Instead, I shut down the computer and went to bed. The next morning, as I had the idea with the smartphone, the link to the video was broken. I felt like an idiot. Only the document could tell my discovery now. This is my story. What do you think this episode meant? Why was it never officially aired? Will it ever see an official release? It didn't come across as an episode which could break any TV ratings. Was it still too risky for the management at Nickelodeon and they forbade airing it? Did somebody from the production staff decide to upload it but got cold feet later and took it down? What was the deal with Lynn's doppelganger and will this strange unsettling be being return in another, in another episode? Was that being friend or foe or bad omen or good one? Was this all of Royal Woods devoid of people but otherwise normal? So many questions I can only speculate about. What do you all think? And that, my little shadows, was the Loud House Lost episode alone. A Loud House Lost episode creepypasta. My final thoughts on the story? Honestly, this was a long story, but I loved every bit of this. I am really, really, I mean, I've narrated the story before, but it's been a while since I actually did narrate it, and reading it again just makes me love the fact of the matter that everything about the story is so well incorporated, well detailed, and just downright awesome in so many ways possible. It's just, wow. Like, flat out, wow. Like, I don't have anything else to say, but wow. This was a story that I, you know, had put in so much detail, so much effort, so much honest realism to it. And the fact of the matter that this entire thing was just one long episode, there was no, there was no blood, there was no gore, there was no any of that. I mean, it was all just downright amazing. And even with the whole aspect of mentioning other creepypastas and other cliches and things like that within a story, normally that would take the story down a bit, but for some reason it worked. It just really, really worked. And the thing at the end and everything was also a very realistic approach to how exactly a person would not have been able to get the episode. I mean, there are many other kind of things you could do, obviously that would make sense, but in this manner, though, I like the explanation of it. The fact of the matter that the person tried to sit there and, you know, convert the file but wasn't able to due to it being on the deep web. And the fact of the matter that, you know, the link was broken afterwards is, you know, it's common. Especially with something like the deep web with websites getting taken down and getting brought back up, like, literally constantly. I mean, the deep web's not like the surface web. It's not exactly as crazily organized as a surface web is. But in this manner, I think that this story just really, really gave as much effort as it possibly could have given. It was downright amazing, and I just, I love this. I genuinely love this story. Now, with that said, do I have any negatives to say about this story? To be completely honest, other than the extreme length that this story was, I can't exactly say that there was really anything particularly negative about it. I mean, sure, some people might not like the fact that the lost episodes and other cliches and things like that and other creepypastas were mentioned, and if you do find that as a negative, that's perfectly fine. I mean, that, 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 that can just be your own review on that one, but for me personally, I don't think that those did any kind of difficulty or harm to that story. In fact, I thought that it more or less enhanced it in such a way that was just downright amazing. But even with that being said, though, I still liked it. But what did, but of course, like I always say, this is simply my own personal opinion. And if you disagree with it, that's perfectly fine too. We're all entitled to our own opinions in regards to these creepypastas, and this is simply my own personal thoughts. 
My final rating of the story would have to be a 10 out of 10. This is a very good creepypasta, very well done, very well made. It's pretty long, but it's extremely enjoyable as well. But what did you guys think about this creepypasta? Did you guys enjoy it? Did you guys not? Also, what would you have personally done to help make the story a lot better? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. I'm the Shadow Reader. Thanks again for watching today's episode. And like always, roll the outro because I'm out. In fear and surprise, as your eyes widen, your mouth goes dry with each battered breath. You try to scream, your mind begs to be glued to your computer screen. The killers they slash, the tapes burn and crash, the cartridge you bought will be your final haunt. The rituals of hate will seal your fate. The tears you shed will be from a fear-gripping portrait that marriage your fill, terrorizing hateful, burning violent, rage-inducing knife slashing, blood splattering, silent screams. Only time will tell if you will escape this online hell. Your horror-filled obsessions will come with its own regressions. Your pathetic screams will not be heeded anyway. Because your nightmares will come at any day